My name is Andrea Maidley. Um, I'm the mother of Daniel. <coughs> Danny was 18 and a half when he was killed. Very young. He was operating a machine called a horizontal borer. Uh, he was a first year apprentice and he was working on, on machining holes into a die. And uh, nobody will ever know exactly how he was pulled into the machine. But it had a very powerful rotating spindle, much like a, a massive drill, you know, the size of a small room. That's the, you know, the sort of size we're talking about. Um, I think there's a pretty strong chance that his dust coat was caught by the spindle. Uh, and somewhere along the line, whether he was reaching up to get the lubricant for the, the drilling job, we're not really sure about that. But um, he, uh, yeah, he was pulled into it, and, and by, based on the witness accounts, um, he was tossed around, thrown around by his clothing, um, and slammed around the various parts of the machine. And it wasn't until somebody went to turn the machine off that it stopped with him effectively wrapped around it. Awful. His injuries were massive. He, uh, he lost both his feet, which, you know, in, in the big scheme of things, were probably the least serious of the injuries that he had. Most of the injuries were internal. Uh, and that's what eventually killed him. The following day he died because his lungs were not able to transport oxygen to his brain. So he was declared brain dead the following day. Well, I have thousands of beautiful memories of Danny. The best are when he grew up, he, he became more confident. He was reasonably sensitive in the sense that he was really conscious of people's feelings, um, uh, very careful of what he said, he was always he would never complain about anything if he bought something that he wasn't happy with. You know, he'd ask me to call them and fix it because he didn't want to upset people. So, um, but, but that, that wasn't a lack of confidence. That was just him not, not wanting to hurt people's feelings. Uh, how can it not? The day that, that he died, it's like a vase that you try to fix, you know, it's just a mess and you try to put your life back together, you try to get on with your life, but it's just scarred and ugly because there's nothing, even the most beautiful day you feel guilty because he's not in it. You know, I accept that. But um, it hurts. That's life now. It's hard. Every day is hard. Um, the days that you do find it a bit easier, there's usually something in it that, that sends your brain screaming back. And it's like it happened yesterday. I have to work really hard at remembering his voice and, and things like that because you're so scared of forgetting. Well, you know, Danny had a lot of great friends and um, every year they come up on his anniversary and, uh, and we sit around and we talk about him. I think one of the things that I notice most is that they have a much more acute sense of danger at work now and, and you know, just danger and there's, there's a, an awakening about the, um, you know, the fact that we're not immortal. Um, a few of them, you know, well, certainly people that have been close to Daniel have gotten into safety roles at work and, and that's an area that they're following. So, you know, I guess the upside to that is that some good has come from that, from his immediate circle of friends and family. Um, his uncle, you know, is passionate about safety at work absolutely passionate about it. So in that respect, you know, it's, uh, I mean, they, 
they have to get on with their lives, they're so young, so, but it's good to see them, you know, honouring this memory.